Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus Gives Personal Truth to Miranda, filmed on the 28th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Well, Miranda, um, yeah, you've put your name down for a personal truth session, along with 30 other people, I think, so far. <laughs> but uh, your question was really good, I thought, so I wanted to just... Uh, I'll just read out what you wrote down, just to remind you. You said, there's an issue of not having a strong enough will to do what needs to be done, even though I know what needs to be done, and even sometimes you know how to do it. But, um, I'm not sure what that word is, but... Uh, something. Something takes over and I feel weak-willed. Okay. Now, what, what do you feel the moment you know, that something takes over. What's the feeling that you actually have? Can you remember it? So can you give an example of somewhere where you knew what you wanted to do, you knew what should be done, but you didn't do it? Yeah. Yeah, mostly it's about, like, um, you know, like, I know there's some emotion that yeah. needs to be worked through. Yeah. And uh, either I set a time and so, okay, I'm going to start working on it. And then something caught my eye, or I remember, you know, there's some story, I mean, reading that I haven't finished, you know. Yep. Not, not the, uh, the divine truth material, but yep. romance something or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a romantic book or yeah, something. Yeah, romantic, and <laughs> yeah. I'm in the middle of it, and yeah. then, like, I set my mind, okay, I'm not going to pick that up, but something just, well, I, I, I allow myself to be weak-willed, <laughs> so I got into that. See, I wouldn't call that weak-willed. Do you know what I'd call that? Resistance? No. I would call that having a very strong reel to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's stronger than, apparently, it's stronger than my desire to process. Correct. So be careful we, we don't judge things as, oh, I'm weak-willed, oh. because most of us are very strong-willed, actually, in many cases. Uh, but we just okay. have a strong will in the wrong direction. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that okay. That's, that's right. So, yeah. so the question then becomes, well, why do I have a strong will in a direction that takes me away from progress rather than a strong will in a direction that takes me towards it? So what, if you thought about that question, what, what, what do you feel in the moment? So you, you know that... You, let's, let's use terminology you're probably using in your head, right? I know I should do my emotions... But I really feel like reading the book. Isn't that what happened in that situation? So, so where is the will really engaged? It's towards reading the book. Can right. you see that? Yeah. So, so, and you know you should. So, so when you say should, what does that connotate to you? When you feel should. What, you know, like if, I, if I said to you, you should feel your emotions, what does that feel like? Well, in... Well, in this context, like, you know, I know that if I don't feel that, I would feel actually worse. But when I say should, it means, like, uh, I know a good thing that I... Right, so you're judging the feeling of emotions as a good thing. You know that it works. You've mm -hmm. had some experience mm -hmm. with it, so you know it works. But the draw towards the other thing mm -hmm. is stronger. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, how do, what causes me to have the draw towards the reading of a book or something like that, or anything, watching television, you know, looking at a movie, going out with friends, having a cuppa, you know, having a snooze, having a sleep instead of dealing with my emotion. You could basically put anything as a substitute in there. What causes that to feel stronger than this other direction? That's the real question. Can you see that? Yeah. So, if you allow yourself to think about the moment, the situation, what's the feeling that comes up when you think about, oh, I've, got to get in, I've got to get into my emotion? It's a feeling of like obligations. Right. And, um, and I notice that I, I don't like that. Yes. I, I sort of like rebel or, or sabotage myself whenever I feel yep. that I should do something. Okay, so why do you feel you should do it? Um, going back from what I have 
understood or, or analyzed a little bit is like uh, growing up have to be, you know, time has to be used productively, right. have to be used for something good. Right. Okay, so these are some feelings that you have mm -hmm. that feel like you have to do the right thing, you have to do something mm -hmm. good, you have to use your time productively, you can't spend any time. But, but what f do you finish up doing? I end up doing things that I want to do. Exactly, yeah. And a lot of them are what you'd classify or what that belief would classify as unproductive. Yeah, judge as unproductive. Correct, yeah. yep. So, mm -hmm. so this is what's going on inside of yourself. And then you've called that having a weak will. Yeah, I judge myself. I, you know, I say I'm, you know, I'm bad, and I'm, I'm not going to make the changes, and yeah, and it just gets worse and worse because then I think, okay, if it keeps doing like this, then I'm not going to have any progress. Very true. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes you feel a bit. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel powerless. It makes me feel um, hopeless. But how can it be powerless and hopeless? when you've made the choice? Yeah, I guess not powerless. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've got the power to make a different choice. So can you see, like, in Corny's talk there was that, you know, you get to the choice part, you know, where the, you're at the cross, you're at the T-junction, you can go right or left, and, and, and there's, a, there's a large sense in you, logical sense in you, we'll call it, shall we, mm -hmm. that saying you should go, you know, I'm just trying to think of Corny's illustration, right it was, wasn't it, towards God was the, was mm -hmm. the way he was pointing towards. Um, but there's another feeling in me, I don't know if I want to do that, I think I'd rather read a book or I think I'd rather you know, do something that I enjoy more. Right? So that's the decision that's being made at that point and then you're saying that, that that decision results in a powerless feeling. Well, I can't agree with that. You, you made the decision, so that, that's you using your power to make a decision. You're just making a decision in a direction that's out of harmony with true love of yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So the question then becomes, why do you make a decision that's out of harmony with really loving yourself? So what, what's, the, what's the momentum that pulls you in the direction towards, in this case, like reading the book in comparison to dealing with an emotion, even when you know an emotion is there? What's the feeling you have? So you've got to do, it's a feeling causing the decision, isn't it? There's got to be a feeling there causing the decision. So we've identified one feeling, and that is a feeling, a bit of feeling of resistance towards feeling like you should. Uh, sort of like a bit of a rebellious feeling there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So we, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But what other feelings do you have in that place? What, what do you get out of going towards the book that feeling the emotion doesn't give you? Um, I mean, I could say there's a little pleasure, but even that is diminishing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's actually becoming more and more painful to choose that. Yeah thing and um, the, the, the other feeling is um, just let yourself breathe with it a little and just close your eyes imagine yourself in the situation yeah imagine yourself in the situation again and you're feeling like oh, I've got to go and do this feeling of emotion uh, I, I've also got a really good book to read there's got to be something that causes you to go to the book. So what, what, what is it the book gives you that the, dealing with the emotion doesn't give you? I'm just feeling all this uh, pressure If you hold up now. your microphone. I'm just feeling all this pressure now going up to my head. Um, oh, I lost it. It's okay, just breathe some more again. Just hold the microphone up, just breathe some more. What's causing me, and this is where, see, most of us and most of the people in the audience need to do the same thing with different decisions they make. They're going to have to see at some point there's something that draws you away from going in the direction of love. There's something that pulls you away from that. And the key is to not judge it. The key is to feel it. 
And so what we need to do is just feel, what is that feeling I'm getting from the thing? Like in this case, from the book. What's the feeling you're getting? It's almost like um, control. There's a, I, I, it's just like, I, um, it's something that I know. Right. And, and it's like... Um, You've admitted it's, it's like given you temporary pleasure in the past, so uh -huh. it gives you some pleasure. What's the pleasure it gives you, by the way, when you read a romantic book in particular? It's like not dealing with, with what I'm facing. You know, it's like a, a respite, like yeah, a but, respite but, from my feelings. But why isn't a, like a crime thriller or a, or a you know, ah, why, why yeah, is it a romantic okay. book? <laughs> it's um, addiction to happily ever after. Well, see, I, I don't know if I'd call it an addiction to living happy ever after. Have you ever lived happily ever after before? No, it's no? like, it, it gives me a, a it's like, a, if I read that, then I get the feeling of um, what those people are feeling. Yes, yeah, so you get to feel some of the feelings that a person in love feels, because mm -hmm. it's all described in the book, right? Mm -hmm. But what is that, what is, why are you attracted to that? Because I feel, I feel uh, very empty. Yeah, you don't yeah. have that in your mm -hmm. life, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you get to feel that yeah. through the book. Right. right? So you can see mm -hmm. that your, the book gives you feelings that you don't have in your day-to-day -day life. Right. right? Yeah. So there's the attraction to the book. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? And yeah. particularly to the romance books, mm -hmm. that's the attraction. Because they give you feelings that you, in your day-to-day -day life you're not having much romance, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this feeling that, ah, oh, you know, if I read a book, I can feel or share in some of those feelings mm -hmm. that I don't normally have in my day-to-day -day life. So what's drawing you to the book is the will being used to avoid the feeling that you don't have romance in your life. Mm -hmm. okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And what's drawing you towards dealing with the emotion? Some childhood belief that's been imposed upon you from your parents that you should do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if I weighed up those two feelings, I'd go, yeah, I can understand totally why you go for the book. <laughs> Does that it's make nice sense? Because the book is a nice feeling, right? right. And, the, and the other feeling is like, should? No, I shouldn't. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to do the should. And, and there's no positive attraction there, is there? No incentive. In the no way. incentive. Mm -hmm. However, now... Now let's look at it truly though. If you could feel the emotions associated with not having romance in your life mm -hmm. and actually process through them, from what you've logically learnt, that would probably draw romance into your life, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So can you see actually reading the book is not going to bring romance into your life, but actually dealing with an emotion about romance will bring romance into your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who wouldn't want romance? I reckon it's wonderful. Right? So of course you'd want that. But the problem is, is you're looking for a temporary quick fix solution mm. for the feeling that you have. And that feeling is drawing you away from using your will in a, not, in a different direction. And this is what I'm suggesting to you, is the reason why your will is being drawn mm -hmm. is because you actually want this quick fix solution yeah. to the romantic situation in your life. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's not just that. <laughs> no. I mean, the quick fix is like um, often what, like, okay, I can feel this quickly instead of like um, Correct. working through yeah. that. So, so why would a person want a quick fix solution that's temporary over a permanent <laughs> solution, do you think? Why, why would somebody want that? Instant gratification? Well, it's not real gratification, is it? Like, no. re is reading about a romance in a book as good as having one? No. I don't think so. <laughs> I'd, I'd certainly rather have one. You know, when I was a kid, when I was about four or five, I used to read romantic books all the time. Yep. From the age of four or five, I could read from the age of three. So from the age of four or five, I was reading all sorts of books, my mum and dad's books and whatever. And, and my mum sometimes used to have romance books, but it wasn't very often because my dad would make fun of her. So I'd go and buy them. So you know all the Mills and Boons? Yep. Like I, I, I read them from age five to about age nine. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, right? I read lots of those when and, I was younger. And, and that 
and I, you know, I loved the feeling. I was reveling in the feeling of it. And the really, the real feeling was, again, the feeling was this feeling that I was missing out on my. There was a terrible amount of soma, uh, sadness in me mm. about the loss of romance that I that I didn't recognise at the time, which I now recognise. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you obviously have a feeling in you about missing romance, wanting romance, missing it as well. And that sometimes when I read that, you know, like certain things just like brought out so much emotions. They do, yeah. A lot of yeah. longing, a lot of sadness. Yeah, but it's not real longing, you see. Mm. see but, but for for my life kind of thing. Yep. Not, not about the story, but you know, it just... I understand, but it's not real longing. Because okay. right. real, real longing would actually feel the grief associated. The grief associated that, that you're actually keeping inside of you is preventing romance, actually. So the grief you have inside of you about romance, if you entered a relationship at this point in time, would, would directly colour the relationship so much that it will actually damage the relationship. Mm. So what God is looking to do through the law of attraction is to actually help you feel the feeling about the loss of romance in your life, which is one of the aspects of what you go towards, but it's one of your favourites, right, of what you go towards to avoid emotion. Now, if we just look at what Corny said in his talk, there were three main reasons why we don't go to anything emotionally. Mm -hmm. What are they? those reasons again? Can you remember them? What was the first one? Resistance to truth. If you just hold the mic a bit. Resistance to truth. Resistance to truth was resistance to emotionally feeling the truth. That was the third one, yep. Mm -hmm. Second one was, or first one? Um, lack of faith. Lack of faith in? In... In myself, in God. Right, so God and yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the middle one, can you remember that one? Use of will. No, no. That was it's interesting that the one that you can't remember is actually the one that you have the most trouble with. I'm blanking right now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something many of us need to learn, is the, the thing we blank about mm -hmm. is actually where we've got most of our resistance towards, right? The second one, which was one of the most important things, was we're afraid of being overwhelmed emotionally. Mm. So the, there's only really three main reasons why we don't want to go towards something, and that is those three reasons. We don't have any faith, mm -hmm. we don't ha have any desire to go there emotionally because we're afraid to be emotionally overwhelmed. And third point is that we're resisting mm -hmm. God's truth emotionally. Now, your biggest issue is of being afraid to be overwhelmed emotionally on this issue. On this issue, on because this on issue. the other ones I'm... On the other ones, okay. you, you know, you yeah, go, oh, right. you know, other ones like... I will feel the, all those You go through that, them all, mm -hmm. not a problem, how mum and dad have hurt you at different times, I know you've gone sorry, through that, some mm -hmm. of that emotion. But this one, mm. you're pretty resistive to, and you are afraid of being completely overwhelmed by it. And you know why you're afraid of being overwhelmed by it? Because in the end, there's a deep feeling of hopelessness yeah, that you will never have yeah, exactly a decent that. relationship. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And that's a lack of faith. Mm -hmm. That's a lack of faith in God and the way God's created soulmates. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. God's created the other half of you already. Yeah. Yeah. God's got plenty of faith that you'll meet them. God created them. Mm -hmm. So you'll definitely meet them from God's perspective, but you don't have any faith in that. So that, that's connected again to, you know, the deep feeling that, you know, I'm... I'm I don't deserve, or, or it's not going to happen to me, you know, like... Um, well, no, this is what you tell yourself, which is a resistance to feeling the truth of this. So in other words, this is the third point now that you're mentioning. You're resistive to feeling that you won't find your soulmate ever. Um, you're resistive to feeling the hopelessness of it all. Yeah, the hopelessness, that's, that's the one that I feel... Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, not just about the soulmate, but just like... I see it in other people, you know, like things are happening, but somehow I cannot even conceive or imagine. And, and that it will happen for you. Yeah. 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 And that creates just like a, a feeling of an ab abject hopelessness. Yes. Like, a, what's the point? What's the point of doing right. it? So, mm -hmm. this is the reason why you go, what's the point of doing what is good? It's not going to get me anywhere anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I might as well go to read the book. Mm hmm. I might as well go and do the thing that I get some temporary satisfaction from because the thing that I really want, I'm not going to get anyway, 
if I go down the track of doing the right thing, I'm just not going to get it anyway. That's a lack of faith. And there's a lot of sadness about that. Yeah. There's a lot of sadness about that. Now, a lack of faith can only be felt to be released. It's not something you're going to... See, up until now you've been trying to build your faith intellectually by by going through some positive viewpoints about it. And this is what we're taught in psychology a lot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you are attracted to psychology a lot. In terms of tell myself some positive things, you know, like tell myself the, the good things, and eventually those things might come. And that doesn't work, actually. Mm -hmm. right? And the reason why it doesn't work is because the soul's not changing. For this situation to change for you, you're going to have to feel the lack of faith you have. Once the lack of faith as a feeling releases you from you, then the truth that you have a soulmate already, you know, God's already created that person for you, that all you need to do is get in the condition to attract them and you'll attract them automatically. And in fact, the soulmate attraction is the, uh, is the biggest possible attraction you could ever have aside from your attraction to God. So, mm -hmm. so that means that there must be a lot of resistance going on if the biggest possible attraction is not happening for you. There must be some concrete blocks in between you and your soulmate mm -hmm. that you're not attracting. And one of these concrete blocks is the feeling of hopelessness. Mm. Does that make sense? It is the feeling of a lack of faith in God on this issue. This issue of, I'm not going to ever get what I want when it comes to a relationship. I'm just not going to happen for me. And that's the feeling that you avoid. That's where your lack of faith is mm -hmm. in regard to this issue. You're going to need to feel it. <coughs> So what, what does that look like? I mean, have you know, or, or like feeling the lack of faith? Well, see, see uh, tomorrow and the next day, we're going to learn a lot of things about mm -hmm. the facade self, the hurt self and the addictions. Particularly not tomorrow, but the next day, what I'm going to suggest mm -hmm. you do is listen to the material that Mary and Cornelius deliver on the day of addictions because they will help you identify the feeling that's present, what draws you to the book, and what emotion you're trying to skip over when you're drawn to the book. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? And, and, and then instead, uh, Mary's going to give you a talk about how to challenge that. Right, what do I do? What, what things can I do to stop that from happening? Where I'm drawn to the book and I just go straight to the book and get the feeling met temporarily, but, but the underlying hopeless emotion is never felt. What do I do instead? So rather than me go through all of that with you, I'd like you to, to listen to Mary and Cornelius mm -hmm. on, on when, uh, when is it? It's Monday now, so when, it'll be Wednesday. But what I'm trying to point out with you now is that it's not due to a lack of will mm -hmm. that you actually have this problem. Your will is drawing you in a direction that's not in harmony with loving yourself. So it's actually powerfully drawing you in a direction that's out of harmony with loving yourself. The, question, the thing you need to face is the hopeless feeling you have that prevents you from being drawn in a different direction. Mm. Because whenever you contemplate having your soul made and all those kind of things, all you feel actually mm. is a feeling that it's not going to happen for me, like it's hopeless, I've wanted my soul mate for years, mm. I've never found, never yeah. found him. It's just not going to happen for me. That's the feeling that you're not allowing yourself to feel, okay. which is the feeling of a lack of faith. Okay. It's a lack of faith in yourself, the power of your own soul, but it's also a lack of faith in God's creation, what, what mm -hmm. God created for you. So it's a lack of faith in God, God's mm -hmm. laws and God's principles. You don't believe that if you remove whatever it is that's blocking you and your other half from meeting, that you'll ever meet. And that is a lack of faith in God's goodness, a lack of faith in what God created. Does that make sense? And the only way to yeah. feel a lack of faith is to feel the emotion, yeah. to actually feel the hopeless feeling you feel when you feel about your soulmate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because I feel I've worked through, I mean, I've experienced the feeling of hopelessness, but on other issues. On other issues. And for yeah. some reason, I didn't touch. This part, you know, about love. No, can about I tell you why you haven't touched this part? Because to overwhelm me. Because you go to the romantic book and that gives you the satisfaction. So Temporary. it's like it's like postponing. Postponing, postponing yeah. Postponing. You're just postponing it. Every time you read a romance novel, you're just postponing the terrible feeling mm. to another time. 
Mm. And this, you know, you have a big cry about how much you want your, your soulmate and how much you want that person, but, but that's not the actual emotion. Mm. That's the addiction that you're feeling. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and now I just realize how much that part about resisting this emotion affects you know, other aspects of my life, my work, my abundance, just because I'm Correct. stuck with this. You know? Because you, you think about it, there's a lot of things that you're thinking that your soulmate will bring to you. What do you, what do you believe your soulmate will give you when you enter this relationship, if you ever do? Because the irony is you don't believe you're ever going to meet your soulmate, but you do have a lot of beliefs about what your soulmate should do. I haven't even thought much about that. I mean, just from the past... No, you have. Yeah, and, and I think in that way, it makes me want like, oh, too much work. <laughs> <laughs> too much work? <laughs> too much work. It's yeah. like, oh, you know, I have to change a lot of things just to... Because, you know, from the experiences I've had with um, male, it's always been, yeah, like um, giving up myself and having to do what they want to do to get... Right, no, so this is what I'm saying. You, you have a lot of beliefs about your soulmate. Mm. That he's going to create a lot of work for you. You're going to give yourself away to him and he's going to mm. use that. And he's going to abuse that. He's going to make you feel bad about yourself. Like, who would want a soulmate under those circumstances? I wouldn't want one either mm -hmm. if I believed that. You know? yeah. And this is where, you, again, you're not believing in God's process. There's, I mean, there's still lack of faith in what God's created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And without this hopeful, hopeless feeling leaving you, which will involve all of these feelings, like it will involve feelings associated. So this is all feelings associated with your dad, right? Mm -hmm. About, about men generally and men yeah. generally. Mm -hmm. Once these feelings leave you, you won't have the same beliefs you have now about men. Yeah. You won't. And that, that will actually cause the attraction to occur. At the moment, the beliefs about men are repo it's, repelling. It's, it's almost like so... Um there's, there's no option kind of a feeling, you know, that's just, I cannot imagine it to be differently and that's I what know. probably caused me to be feeling so hopeless and pointless about Correct. working through all this. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that also then causes you in the situation to go, okay, yes, I should go down that track and feel that emotion but I'd rather read a romantic book and have this mm -hmm. feeling go away, you know, and feel... So that must be something that I... It's a big, big thing because it's... It's a big thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I use that for all other things. Yes, you do. To run away from yes. all the other things. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes what's happening is the very thing that we feel hopeless about is the very thing that is our major addiction. Mm. So our major addiction draws us away from the very thing that we feel the most hopeless about. Mm-hmm. In your case, your major addictions are relating to avoiding this hopeless feeling about ever being with a partner that's going to be loving and a good relationship. That's your major hurt. And the addictions are all about trying to help you stop that feeling. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So that's how you're using your will. Mm -hmm. So what, what I would suggest is this. Feel that feeling of hopelessness. So next time you reach for the book, Sit there and feel how hopeless you feel it is about having a partner who's actually loving and in a romantic relationship with you. Feel so that. So not, not read it, but just stop right before I read and just feel that. Yeah, just feel it. Just hold the book in your hand. Look at the book. Look at the kissy kissies on the front. <laughs> it's a new reader. <laughs> or, the, or, or usually the very handsome man on the front with the girl, you know, who's also very beautiful. It's an e-reader, so you, can, you don't see that. <laughs> oh, okay, e-reader. <laughs> just imagine that in your mind. And, and just feel about, yeah, that's never going to happen for me. Because that's the feeling you need to connect with. It's never going to happen for you. And that feeling draws you away. It, by, you want to avoid that feeling, so it draws you away. I, I feel like I've, I've touched that a few times. But, but I guess I don't allow myself to feel totally overwhelmed by yeah, it. Yeah, honestly, disturbing. Yeah, you, you don't allow emotional overwhelm on that subject at mm. all. You don't. Because, because if you did, your life would change significantly very rapidly. And that's what you're worried about. You don't want it to change significantly rapidly. What if your soulmate's drawn into your life and he tries to control you and he tries to put you down and he tries to do all the things that the average you know, Indonesian male would probably want to do? Mm -hmm. How are you going to feel then? Yeah, I might not like them. Yeah, you won't like him at all probably, right? 
<laughs> so you don't want that. You want the idealised form, which is actually things that you've grown up with in your own mind about what would be the ideal, and that's what you want. But, but that's not what he's going to be like, and that's not what the relationship's going to be like, and you know it. So you don't want that. So you'd rather the book, and that's why your will is drawn towards the book. Mm -hmm. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's feelings of a lack of faith in God and a lack of faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a feeling of not wanting to be overwhelmed with this terrible feeling that you feel regarding never ever having a other half of yourself with you. And there's also this feeling that you have of not wanting to feel the truth about God, mm -hmm. what God's created. God's created the other half of yourself. It doesn't matter what condition he's in. God's created him. He's, he's there. He's out there somewhere. You can attract him. But it's going to involve your will. It's really scary. <laughs> That's why you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's scary, right? But remember, and this is something I probably need to say to all of the people in the audience. Whenever you say it's really scary, you know what you're really doing? I'm, I'm rejecting it. No, you're honouring your fear oh, okay. above the truth. You're honouring it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're worshipping your own fear. That yeah, that's, that's the postponement that I keep doing. Yeah, if you just hold the mic up a little. Yeah, postponing things and just, okay, maybe later, maybe later. Exactly. Yeah. And that's because you're worshipping your own fear. Mm. In other words, you're honouring your own fear above everything else. You see, remember Corny said in his talk today that he, everyone gave all their reasons why they, you know, wouldn't, why they were afraid of change. You know, they listed all their fears of why they were afraid of change. And then Corny said, sorry, it's none of those reasons. It boils down to three reasons. You don't want to feel your lack of faith. You don't want to feel emotionally overwhelmed. And you don't want to feel... God's truth. You have a resistance to feeling God's truth. Because if you could do all of those things, can you see you would no longer honour fear? Fear, like you still have fear, fear would still be in you, but you would no longer honour it. You would no longer put it as number one. The problem for most of us with regard to change is we're putting our fear as number one. We're, we're putting our fear as number one, we're making it first in our lives, and then we adjust all of our lives to suit our fear. Mm -hmm. That's not doing anything. All that, is, is, all that is is making the excuse that our fear is too big to feel. Can you see that? Mm. That's all we're doing. We're just making the excuse. So, and, and many of us use the excuse of being afraid to stop doing lots and lots of things in every single moment of every day. Right? Many women who are not in relationships are not in a relationship because they use the fear that they'll be controlled if they enter a relationship. So they don't want to have a relationship because that gives them complete autonomy. They don't have to deal with the issue of control in a relationship. Right? So, so they're afraid of dealing with the issue of control in the relationship. They want control. They're not willing to give up the fear of being out of control. And so they don't engage a relationship. That's just honouring a fear. Mm. See, a person who loves truth doesn't honour fear. They still have fear, but they don't honour it. They don't worship it. They don't do what it says. Does mm. that make sense? What they do instead is they know they have the fear and they know they need to feel it, and they do the opposite of what the fear says. Mm. Right? That's what they would do, particularly if the opposite would lead them into a path of more truth. They honour the truth over the fear. They worship the truth more than they worship the fear. Does that make sense? And you're not doing that on this issue. Yeah. What you're doing on this issue is you're honouring the fear. You're, you're believing and wanting to believe what the fear tells you. Mm. I'm not going to get my soulmate anyway. What's the point? I might as well just read a book and feel good temporarily. Mm. You're, you're not honouring the truth. You're honouring your fear. You're living in your fear. And, and you're using the fear as an excuse to not feel emotion. Mm. Right? So I guess that requires so, a change, I mean, like um, action. Yes. Change. So here's a, here's a good thing for you. This is, this is where we'll finish on this discussion. Next talk, 
Mary's giving you is she's talking to you about strengthening your will right, to love. That's the talk she's giving. In that talk, you're going to find there's many points about what we need to do to strengthen our will in a direction that is actually going to be more advantageous to us. Mm -hmm. right? And then on, remember I said on Wednesday, there's the addiction side of the talk. So listen to that material as well. And let yourself work just to honour the, the fact that you have the addiction. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Let yourself recognise the addiction and let yourself see why it's there. It's there so that you can avoid this terrible pain that, of hopelessness about soulmates, a hopelessness about having your part, having a loving relationship. And that hopelessness obviously came well, long, many years ago. During your childhood, that hopelessness, hopelessness got developed. It doesn't really matter where it came from. You've got to stop using your fear as an excuse to get over it. Mm -hmm. right? okay. So... so so rather than using your fear as an excuse, now what we need to do is focus more on the truth. What is mm -hmm. the truth? God has your soulmate. It's just some emotions in you preventing your soulmate from coming to you. Let's say your soulmate tries to control you and manipulate you and do all the things you're afraid of happening. Right? They're just emotions. You can deal with that if you do with, it, with God. That's, that's the truth. So you tell yourself these truths rather than keep telling yourself the lie which is that it's all hopeless, nothing's going to get better, that's the lie. Mm -hmm. yep. And so this also works with another similar addiction I had, that, that I would give up. It'll know. work with every addiction you okay. have. <laughs> that's the beauty of learning how to do something properly. So it that's another with issue again. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so rather than bringing up the other issue now, mm -hmm. you can apply these principles to every issue. Mm -hmm. So, so, so a different addiction would, would uh, apply to a different issue if it's um, correct. what I'm trying to get the feeling correct. from what that... Correct. Uh, and that's yeah. all an avoidance of another emotion that you're afraid of and you're using your fear as an excuse to actually not deal with that emotion. Mm -hmm. It's the same principle right across the board. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. No worries. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time, Appreciate Miranda. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so now, thank you, yeah. Miranda, if you just leave your mic there. Um, so now we just have another break, just a short one, uh, for those of you who still need to go to the toilet and stuff. And then Mary will talk to you about strengthening your will to love. <laughs>